Hey everyone, in today's video we're gonna learn about use form status hook. This hook is currently available in React Canary and Experimental Channels. However, you can use it in the Next.js project without changing any package.json file. I've already written a blog post about it. You can check that out for future reference. So let's first understand why does this hook exist and what problem does it solve. I'm gonna show you the use cases both in client component and server component. So suppose you want to have a form when the user submit the form, you want to show them a loading state, also want to disable the button. The common way of doing it is like this. You have a form, then you attach an events listener to the form and inside the form, you have a loading state like this and you set the loading state inside the handler and after some asynchronous operation, you set the loading state to false. So we have just uh, simulated an API call on asynchronous operation with the set timeout for three seconds. So if the loading state is true, we're gonna display loading and also add disabled attribute. So we have this form, if I type something and let's hit submit, the button is disabled and we see the loading state and we have this alert form submitted successfully. So that's a common way of doing it and there's nothing wrong about it but that's a bit manual because you have to create the state and you have to manage the state manually. It would be nice if React handled the state management logic and this is why this use form status hook exists. It gives you the status information of the last form submission. To use this hook, you need to make sure that the hook is actually called inside a form component. So if I go to paste.js and comment on this uh, old form component, and then if I uncomment this form, so we have this form and we have this input and the input has a name attribute. And then we have a submit button. Inside the submit button, we have just called this uh, use form status hook. We have this button. And if the pending state is true, we're gonna render submitting text. And you might have noticed something different that we are using this action attribute instead of on submit prop for adding the submit handler. And in this handle submit function, I'm gonna uncomment this out. We have just mimicked an asynchronous process. We are gonna wait for three seconds. Now this data attribute is a little bit different, so it would be better if I could show it to you. So in the submit button, I'm gonna comment this piece of code so that we don't see the loading state. And by the way, this is actually using client component. I'm gonna also show you how to use it with server components. If I type my name and hit submit, you see we don't have a normal object, we have this form data object. To get the actual data, you need to use the get method. So data.get and here you need to specify the name of the input and the name of the input was f name, so first name, so I'm gonna put f name. And now if I type submit and you see the value of the input so just make sure that you have passed the action prop. So let's go to the submit button. Here we have called the use form status hook. And if I show you the data, the return of the use form status, you see that we have few information. We have action to null, data is also null, method is null, and pending is false. Since we are not submitting anything, that's why pending is false. And I'm gonna also uncomment this. Now to get the pending state as true, you need to make sure that the action, the action function is actually an asynchronous function like we have here and we are waiting for three seconds. So now if I hit submit, you see this text submitting and the pending state were also true and then becomes false. And if I expand this, the pending state is true. We also have this method, which is get method. Then you have this data, which is the form data object. And then you have an action, which is a function. And this function is exactly this handle submit function. And this data 
is actually this data variable on this function. And once the pending state is turned false, once we are done with submission, the data will be removed, pending will be false. Like you can see from here, I will also zoom it for you a bit. So with the help of this hook, you are able to get the pending state without you having to manage the state by yourself. Plus this action attribute is also really nice because with this data object, you will be able to get the data of the input without you creating states and then manually change the states whenever the user changes the input. Now I've used it with client component. Let's see on the server component. So for server component, I can remove this use client directive and we need to make sure this handle submit action is actually a server action by adding a use server directive. Now this handle submit is a server action and the rest of them is fine. And inside the submit button, you need to make sure this is a client component because server components can't have any kind of hooks. So now if I submit, you see the submitting state and the submitting state goes away and the state is now clear again. So this is how you can also use it in server component. So the code is pretty much the same. Now here you have to keep few things in mind in order to use the use form status hook correctly. So first you need to make sure you use the action prop instead of the on submit prop, which is actually an event handler and make sure the function is actually an asynchronous function or return some kind of promise because without having an asynchronous logic, you won't be able to display any kind of loading state. And the last point is that you need to make sure that the component where this uh, use form status hook is called is actually inside the form component. And this is also mentioned in the React documentation. So if I show you the doc, so if you go to the pitfall section here, it clearly says that use form status will not return status information for a form rendered in the same component. If you call the hook in a component where the form is a child, then the pending will never be true. This hook will not work. You need to make sure that the hook is called in another component that is a children or simply nested inside the form. So these are the three things you just have to keep in mind. Otherwise, the use form status hook is really great, especially in server component where you need to show some kind of loading logic, you need to use this use form status hook. So that's it for today. If the video has been helpful for you, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Check the blog for future reference and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.